Welcome to this comprehensive guide on understanding time complexity in algorithms. In the world of programming and computer science, the efficiency of an algorithm is crucial for its practicality and scalability. A fundamental concept that aids in this evolution is time complexity. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Write your comment in the comment section. In this video, I will explore the basics of time complexity and delve into its various types using simple Python examples and visual representations. By the end, you will have a clear understanding of different time complexity, such as big O of one, big O of n, big O of n square, and big O of log n. And there are implications on algorithm performance. Let's dive in and into the Socrates behind the essence of algorithms, making complex concepts accessible to everyone, regardless of your programming background. Join me on this enlightening journey through the intricates of time complexity in algorithms. Let's get started. What is time complexity? Time complexity is a way of expressing the amount of time an algorithm takes to run as a function of the size of its input. It helps us to understand how an algorithm's execution time grows as the input size increases. We use bigger notation to analyze the performance of the algorithms. The bigger notation is a mathematical notation that describes the limiting behavior of function when the argument tends toward a particular value or unique. In the context of time complexity, it describes the upper bound of the time which is taken by an algorithm in terms of the input size. We analyze the complexity, time complexity of an algorithm. So we there are four common uh, methods to analyze the time complexity of some common algorithms. So the first one is con constant time complexity, which is denoted as B of one. An algorithm which is said to have constant time complexity, if the execution time of the algorithm does not depend on the size of the input, this means that the time taken to run the algorithm remains constant regardless of the input size. So here is the visual representation of constant time complexity. So whatever the input is, the time complexity remains the same. The input is 20, the input is 40, the input is 60, 80, 100, but the time complexity to execute each input uh, is the same because we have only one input and we, we have uh, equal number of outputs. So the big O notation, for example, here uh, the big O notation is big of one. And let's say we have list of array, array integer array numbers, and we want to access elements. For example, if I want to access the first element in the array, I can record that array name dot, um, I mean, index zero. So this is uh, big of one because we are accessing one input and return one output at a time. So the execution time is constant. So the execution time never increase or decrease. So because it doesn't depend on the input of the, uh, I mean, the size of the input. For example, if you want to access uh, at index two. So this means you are accessing one element at a time. So the execution time is uh, uh, never increased in this case. So that's a constant time complexity, which represents this big of one notation. So here is an example. So the example provided a constant algo and takes items as an input or parameter to the function. Uh, but the function always returns the first item from the list items. From this, always returns one output, the first item from uh, the list of items. So regardless of the size of the, li the list, it is evident that time taken to retrieve the first element remains the same, irrespective of the length of the list, so-called constant time complexity. So 
always has one input and one output at a time. And the second one is linear time complexity, which is uh, different from constant time complexity. In the linear, the time uh, increases uh, as per the input size increases. So the time and uh, input size has uh, linear uh, proportion or direct proportion. So an algorithm has linear complexity, which is denoted as big O n, the uh, big O n. N represents the number of number of inputs. Input. So it depends on the number of your input to uh, get the time execution to run this algorithm. So it depends on that. That's why we call it uh, big of N notation, and it is uh, it has a direct proportion with. Uh, the input size hope here when the number of uh, input uh, increases the time complexity increases as well so uh, the output is depending on the number of inputs if we have five inputs the output will be five so to execute uh, the out the five inputs it takes time to uh, return five outputs as well so for example here we have uh, integer arrays and if you wanna return each number in the array. So this is a for loop. Uh, you can return i. So this iteration, this for loop, iterates over each number and it takes uh, time to execute, for example, it's when here we have three elements, and if you add more elements, the time execution will uh, increase when the number of inputs increases as well. That's why uh, uh, in linear time complexity, it has direct proportion with the input sizes. So that's called linear time complexity that represents big of n. So here is an example. So the function iterates through each element in the list items and prints the, the item. The time taken to complete this operation increases linear, uh, linearly with the number of elements in the list. When the number of elements in the list increases, the time execution uh, increases as well. That's why uh, we call this uh, time complexity algorithm is called uh, linear time complexity. The third is quadratic time complexity, which is different from linear uh, time complexity in algorithm, uh, which is said to have quadratic time complexity, which is denoted as big of n square. That's the square of the size of the input. So the time complexity is the square of the size of the input. Uh, if the time taken by the algorithm is proportional to the, the square of the size of them. Here is the visual representation of quadratic time complexity, uh, which is denoted as big of n squared. So here, it is just increasing the input size and the time complexity uh, uh, increases as well, but it is quadratic, quadratically increases. Here is an example. So in the quadratic uh, time complexity, uh, we have uh, nested locus. So maybe you may have cubic or and so on but here the quadratic representation only we have outer loop and nested loop so to execute this uh, locus it takes n square time complexity because uh, let's say we have uh, three inputs here n is three so to execute uh, this, uh, this element, it takes three to the power of two, which is eight. We could have eight outputs. So the input is different from the output in the quadratic time complexity, because we could have nested loops in this case. So it's, it's going to execute eight times uh, to uh, terminate or end the execution of this algorithm. So this uh, 
quadratic equation, uh, for example, in this example, uh, for each uh, element in the list items, there is another list table that iterates so each element in the list. Again, as a result, the function has a quadratic time complexity as the time taken increases quadratically with the number of elements in the list. And the last one uh, is logarithmic time complexity. This is uh, completely different from the quadratic. It is a reverse of uh, quadratic. So an algorithm which is said to have logarithmic time complexity, which is denoted as big of log n, if the time taken to complete the algorithm increases logarithmically with the size of the inputs. So it depends on the size of the input to increase the complexity uh, or the time to calculate the time taken to complete this algorithm. It's uh, logarithmically increases with the size of the input. Okay, this is uh, the video representation of logarithm time complexity with big of log n uh, notation. Okay, here is an example. So we have uh, n, n is the input and here, uh, initially defined the iterator AI and while well, loop uh, just evaluated the, this condition, the condition uh, iterators uh, based on this loop, while well, loop. So the value of I is multiplied by two in each iteration. In each iteration, the value of uh, I is multiplied by two uh, and this result in the loop running for logarithmic number of times based on the input number based on the input numbers, depends on the input number n. Okay, the time complexity remains relatively low even as the input size increases significantly because here, as you can see, uh, the time may be uh, significantly increases, but the uh, input size is relatively uh, low. So that is the logarithm. So we can also measure time complexity, how often the time, uh, how often the algorithm takes to execute that uh, uh, I'll, I'll function. I have defined the algorithms above and uh, I will measure each uh, function is to uh, see the time. Okay, the first one is define the measure time function and this takes function as an argument. So here is the number of arguments, doesn't matter, and you start define the start time uh, and then call the function. Once the time is started, we can solve the function and it will uh, then define end time after calling the function. So we can get the end time after uh, the function uh, successfully executed. And we uh, return the difference uh, between end time and start time and we get the time that the function takes to execute. Okay, then here is the list of items we have five elements in this case and uh, first let's uh, run let's run the uh, constant algorithm to measure the time and let's see the output so here is the time to uh, get the first item in the uh, in the list only uh, we have one output in this case. And if let's disable this and enable this one, that is linear algorithm. The linear algorithm okay. Yeah, here in the linear algorithm, uh, there is a one for loop that I directly prints each item in the list. So uh, here we have five inputs and the output is also five. And it takes this much time to uh, execute uh, this input uh, as an, an output, okay? Uh, because uh, it just iterates through each item in the list and returns each uh, input and returns an output. That's why it takes uh, more time. When the, the number of inputs increases here, for example, six, this is, the, uh, just remember that 0 0.0079, let's calculate. Yeah, the time is increases as well in the linear uh, 
time complex algorithm. Okay. So the, the third one is a quadratic algorithm. In the quadratic linear, uh, I mean, uh, quadratic time complexity, here we have six inputs in this case. The output would be uh, 46 because the time complexity to, uh, or the time taken to execute this algorithm is a square the size of the input. So we have six inputs, so we could have 36 outputs because here we have nested loops. So that represents the big O n square. So here, so uh, this algorithm executes 36 times, okay? And the last one is logarithmic. So you can test this uh, by your own and ask questions in the comment section of this tutorial. I hope you are understanding time complexity, which is crucial for designing efficient algorithms. It helps us in identifying potential water links and improving the performance of the algorithms. Make sure to test your algorithms with different input size to get a cleaner understanding of their time complexity. Thanks for watching.